Okay, so today is the big day. The first images available from James Webb Space Telescope. Very, very exciting. And this is being recorded on the 12th of July, just after 3.30. So the images are gonna start being released as I'm talking. We've already had a preview of one of the images that was part of the initial release, and that was released last night as part of a bit of a shambles broadcast from President Biden. But I won't get into the details about that because this video is all about my reaction as an astrophotographer to the incredible images that we're going to be seeing from the James Webb Space Telescope. So let's get into it. Um, if you want to find these images, I will put a link to this website in the description down below, but it's just nasa.gov forward slash web first images. So without further ado, the first image that we're going to look at is the one that was released last night, which is SMAX 0723. And this is the image that was kind of made famous by Hubble um, several years ago. If you remember the ultra deep field image that was taken, where Hubble was just pointed to a particular part of the sky and started taking some images. And the result that we got back was thousands of galaxies. And this is the very same image, but from James Webb Space Telescope looking at the same part of the sky. And first impressions are that it's absolutely phenomenal. I will put a comparison view of this image versus Hubble's image next to it. I released a YouTube short about this because the comparison between the two is just ridiculous. Uh, it's amazing how technology has moved on in the last few decades. So what are we actually looking at in this photo here? You'll see lots of different colors and some spikes and some warping around the center. So what are all of these things? So. The first thing I'm going to address are these diffraction spikes. So anywhere that you're seeing a diffraction spike like this, that is a star. And all of these sort of, I was going to say faint fuzzies, but a lot of them aren't very faint in, uh, in this image. Uh, these are all galaxies. And the ones that have the more red color are the ones that have red shifted. And what that means is that they are much, much further away from the James Webb Space Telescope than the ones that are brighter like this one here or this sort of cluster over here. And because James Webb Space Telescope is capturing light at the infrared part of the spectrum, it's able to look right back to the dawn of existence. And all of these galaxies that have red shifted are James Webb Space Telescope looking right back to the beginning of the universe, if you like. And I just find that absolutely mind-blowing. It is incredible. The warping that you can see here where you've got all of these objects that are a funny color, this one here in particular um, is a very funny color. It's called gravitational lensing and what that is is that when you've got a massive celestial body such as you know a number of galaxies, it actually causes a curvature of space-time. And so essentially what's happening here is if as if you're holding up a magnifying glass to space, uh, it's just causing that curvature and that warping that you can see in the center of the image here. I'm not an astrophysicist, so if you want a much better and more detailed explanation that might make a bit more sense, um, then go and uh, read it online. Um, but that's the best explanation I can do. And if we go down to the caption of the image, you can see here that just to get an idea of the sheer size of what we're looking at in space, then this slice of vast universe covers a patch of sky approximately the size of a grain of sand held at arm's length by someone on the ground. And look at how many galaxies have fit into this grain of sand. That's absolutely amazing. My mind is blown. I've been staring at this all day and I see something new every time. Absolutely fascinating. Right, the next image or images that we're going to talk about is the Southern Ring Nebula, NGC 3132. Um, what we've got here is two images captured by two different cameras on the James Webb Space Telescope. So we've got the near infrared on the left and the mid infrared on the right. And you can see that by imaging in different wavelengths in the infrared part of the spectrum, we can bring out different details. So what we're looking at here on the left is essentially this star in the middle is expelling clouds of dust and gas and it's forming what is known as a planetary nebula and it's given that name because as a star is dying and expelling those clouds of dust and gas it creates this sort of spherical shape which can look a little bit like a planet and hence the name planetary nebula it doesn't actually have anything to do with a planet beyond its shape but what we can now see in the right hand image from the mid-infrared instrument is a second star 
locked in a tight orbit with the first star that's also expelling clouds of dust and gas. And that is amazing. And it's by taking images like this and studying stars at different stages of their life that will help astronomers and astrophysicists better understand the life of a star and how it evolves over time. So eventually what will happen is this star will die and therefore will stop expelling clouds of dust and gas, which will mean that this planetary nebula will cease to exist as the clouds of dust and gas will essentially just dissipate into space. Now, I don't do any research in this field, but if I did, I would be very excited about the prospect of being able to research the evolution of a star because James Webb Space Telescope unlocks that capability and that is incredible. <laughs> wow. I'm just gonna read this caption. So this is Stefan's Quintet, which is essentially a cluster of galaxies. Now, let me just read out this caption because as an astrophotographer, this is amazing. So. This is a mosaic. So the enormous mosaic is Webb's largest image to date, covering about one fifth of the moon's diameter. It contains over 150 million pixels and is constructed from almost 1000 separate image files. 1000. The information from Webb provides new insights into how galactic interactions may have driven galaxy evolution in the early universe. Scientists will be more interested in the last part of that sentence, but as an astrophotographer, the way that this image has been constructed is absolutely amazing. So what are we looking at here from an astrophotographer's point of view? So Stefan's Quintet is actually an object that you can image from your own back garden with your own imaging equipment. I, I very much doubt it will look anything like this, <laughs> but you can still do it. So what we're looking at here is a tight cluster of galaxies in the constellation of Pegasus. And again, what we're seeing in this image, the diffraction spikes are stars. All of these faint fuzzies around these much larger galaxies in the center, they are all also galaxies. And again, lots of those have red shifted. But just look at the incredible detail in this galaxy. You can, you can see here, it looks like we've got two interacting galaxies in the center here and the amazing sort of dust lanes surrounding these galaxies. That is absolutely stunning, visually amazing. I'm sure there are some very excited scientists looking at this, but just from a photography point of view, my mind is absolutely blown. This is beyond anything that I would have expected. And I just feel a little bit speechless about that one. All right, so now I'm going to move on to the one that I was most excited about, and that's the Carina Nebula. This is the last image that was just released only a minute ago. It's available to image in the Southern Hemisphere. I can't image it from my back garden, but it is a firm favourite of amateur and professional astrophotographers the world over. I see this image all the time, and I can see why it is an absolutely amazing target, visually stunning to look at no matter what equipment you've got. It's in the constellation of Carina and I'm going to click on it now uh, and holy that just look at that. Look at the look at the depth here. Look at the colors. The amount of dust in this image is phenomenal. It almost looks like you're looking at a mountainous range here. And then this is the sky. Like that is absolutely amazing. The most incredible thing I find about this image is that it looks like it's three dimensional. I, I feel like I'm looking into a landscape. I just can't get my head around that. That looks phenomenal. And you can see all of this dust here and got like such clean lines almost along here. And that's what gives it that sort of mountain range feel to it. And all of this is, is created by stellar winds and ultraviolet radiation from the stars that are surrounding it. And that is just amazing. And you can see just how many stars we're looking at in this image. There are a lot of stars. 
and what James Webb Space Telescope is bringing to this party in its unique way that it's able to do it because of its infrared instruments, it's able to capture detail that has otherwise been invisible to us until now. And that is amazing. It's genuinely looking at a piece of history here. This will change the way that we look at images of space forever. And that's the first four images. I've still got one to go, which I've left for last because it's the exoplanet WASP-96b. Um, I was more interested in the other images. <laughs> so I left the planet until last, even though it was the second image that was released and I've refrained myself from looking at it. Oh, okay. I've calmed down. <laughs> I'm actually, you can't really see my hands, but I'm shaking with excitement. Um, all right, let's, let's move on to the exoplanet. There'll be people that are I'll figure out what I'm looking at in a second. There will be people that are more excited about the exoplanet than the others, but just from a photography point of view, um, I was all about the galaxies and nebulae from these images. And what are we looking at here? A signature of water on an exoplanet. Whoa, that is amazing. It's not a whole deal of info that I can give you from a photography point of view there because there's not really that much to look at um, beyond this graph, but James Webb Space Telescope has detected water on an exoplanet. I'm gonna have to pause the video and read this caption and soak it all in and then come back. Okay, so what we're looking at here is an exoplanet which we already knew about that is orbiting a star much like our own sun, about half the mass of Jupiter, a gas giant exoplanet. James Webb Space Telescope has detected traces of water and there's also evidence of clouds and haze in the atmosphere. That's amazing. That is genuinely groundbreaking stuff. Now, there's not a lot I can offer here from a photography point of view, other than just to say how insane this is that we found traces of water on another planet. Uh, I'm speechless again. I am speechless, lost for words. I don't really know what to say, but this is just the first five <laughs> images that were released from the James Webb Space Telescope. We waited a long time for these images, but I think we can all agree that that has gone way beyond any expectations that I had. It was absolutely worth the wait. I cannot wait to see what it's gonna do over the coming months, years, and beyond, looking back into the vast reaches of space, uh, back to the beginning of the universe and all that stuff that, and all the, incredible advances that we might be able to make in astrophysics because of this telescope. So I'm going to leave this video here. I hope you liked it. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up and thank you so much for watching. And I'll be sure to do another video much like this in the future once more images get released.